Robotic is a new workshop of automation studio, allowing users to create and to simulate sophisticated robotics work cells. In this demonstration, we will show you how to create a work cell, how to operate a robot in manual mode and in automatic mode. We also will show you some examples of complete work cell made with components of the robotic workshop. First of all, we are now can create a robotic diagram document. Right click on the project, go to new, and then choose robotic diagram. Once we have done so, a 3D environment will be presented. We have a floor where we can put robotic objects. The parameters of the floor are customizable. Now we can include a robot from the robot library to the work cell. To do so, go to the library explorer. Under robotics, we can see a robot library. Let me choose a six axis robot for this demonstration. I can drag and drop it to the work cell. The robot appears in the 3D scene and is now ready to use. Now, let me show you how to place the robot in different position. First, we can simply unfix the robot, then drag it to the new positions. Another way to do so is modifying its position and orientation in the robot component properties. For example, here I change the rotation of the robot around Z-axis, by 90 degrees. Robotic Workshop also provides generic loads with different shapes. We can simply drag and drop to include a load to the 3D environment. The load can be grabbed by a robot or carried by a conveyor. All the parameters of the load can be configured in the component properties. For example, let me change the size of a load with the shape of a sphere. The robotic workshop provides conveyors of different types. We can simply use the drag and drop method to include a conveyor to the 3D environment. In this case, I have included a linear conveyor. All the parameters of the conveyor can be configured. Once we have done so, we can now drop some loads on it. Then we simply run the conveyor. All the loads will be carried along the conveyor. We can change the speed or the direction of motion. We can include external tables to a conveyor. To do so, we can enable the table options in the conveyor component properties. The table will be added automatically. We also can add object detection sensor to a conveyor. Simply drag and drop a sensor on a conveyor, the sensor will be attached. Now, let's put a load on the conveyor and then run the conveyor. We can see the two sensors detecting the load when it passes by. The robotic workshop also provides curved conveyor. It's very easy for users to combine linear conveyors and curved conveyors to create a production line. All the parameters of the conveyor can be configured. We can run the two conveyors to see the loads smoothly moving from one conveyor to the other. Let me show you how to jog the robot. First, open the robot control panel. Then, we can start off with jogging the robot in joint mode. Click on the small arrows to change the angle of the corresponding joint.
Then, we jog the robot in Cartesian mode. By pressing the arrows, we can change the position of the robot flange in X, in Y, or in Z directions. We also can change the orientation of the robot flange about the X, Y, or Z axis. The motion can be defined with respect to the base coordinate, world coordinate, or any user-defined coordinate system. We can jog the robot with different speeds. Simply set the speed in percentage, with respect to the maximum speed, and jog the robot. We can jog the robot in step mode. Set the step size in X, in Y, or in Z, and then press the arrow to move the robot. The robot flange will move step by step. Another effective way to jog the robot is using dragger tools. Choose the position dragger tool or orientation dragger tool to start jogging the robot. To perform a certain task, an industrial robot typically must be equipped with an end-of-arm tooling device. In the standard library, the robotics workshop provides generic tools with different shapes. We can simply drag and drop a tool to a robot to attach the tool to the robot flange. All the parameters of the tool can be adjusted in the component properties. For example, we can change the height, the mass, the inertia, or the location of center of gravity, etc. One important feature of robot is the ability to create a user frame and use it as reference for robot motion. Let's say we choose to create a user frame by three points. Click on three points on a surface, the robot will automatically create a user frame. By default, the user frame is named user frame 1. Now, we can use the user frame as reference for robot jogging. Open the control panel, and then choose the user frame 1 as reference. We can use a dragger to jog the robot along the axis of the user frame 1. One important information that users want to know about a robot is the reachable range, or the work envelope of the robot. To display the work envelope, first, enable the work envelope views in the ribbon bar. And then, open Robot Component Properties, choose Display 2D Work Envelope Outline for the wrist. We can see the work envelope around the robot. We also can display the 3D work envelope volume for the wrist. We can do the same to show the work envelope for the tool center point. In this case, we can see that the work envelope for the tool center point is bigger than that for the wrist. So far, we have showed you how the robot works in manual mode. Now, let's see how we can operate the robot in automatic mode. To do so, we need to write robot motion programs. A robot motion program is a list of actions telling robot what to do. The actions are normally defined by instructions. First, create a motion program. Then, we are going to create waypoints. There are many ways to create a waypoint. 
Let me show you here the creation of a waypoint using mouse selection mode method. By clicking on a surface, we will bring the robot tool center point to the center of the surface. The waypoint will be recorded to the robot controller. Then we add instructions to ask the robot to go to the recorded waypoints, one by one. For simplicity, in this example, we can use move joint instructions. The move joint instruction will automatically generate linear paths for all the joints of the robot, while making sure that the tool center point will arrive the expected waypoints. Before executing the motion program, we can see the motion path that the tool center point will travel. We can configure the appearance of the motion path in the motion program properties. Users can verify the path to make sure that the robot will perform the desired motion. Now, let execute the motion program. We will see the robot executing the instructions one by one which bring the robot tool center point from one waypoints to the others as our expectation. We also can execute the motion program in loop mode. Simply check the loop execution option in the motion program properties and then run the motion program to see the robot performing the motion in loop mode. We can write a motion program to perform a pick and place task. By default, the tool is defined as a gripping tool and has been connected to the digital output port 0 of the robot. First, let me create three waypoints. The first waypoint is on top of the box that we need to pick up. The second waypoint is at a certain transition point. And the last one is at the position where we want to release the box. We use the method to choose a position using the mouse with an offset in Z direction to define the third waypoint. Once the three waypoints have been defined, it is ready to start writing motion instructions. The first instruction will be a move joint instruction to the first waypoint. Then, the gripper will be activated by turning on the digital output port 0. We will then add instruction to move the robot TCP to the second and then the third waypoint. Once it reaches the third waypoint, we will release the box by turning off the digital output port 0. We can add the last instruction to bring the robot TCP to the waypoint 2. The motion program is now ready. Let run it to see the robot performing the pick and place task. Here is an example of multiple robots performing a task on a car frame. Each robot is controlled by a separated controller. The robot executes motion programs that has been set up individually. Here is another example of work cell with multiple robots. This time we can see that there are two robots, a production line with many curved conveyors and linear conveyors, two sensors, and several loads. A PLC ladder program is used to monitor the states of the robots and the sensors to synchronize the motion. During the operations, the two sensors always update their status to the PLC. If a sensor detects the presence of an object at the end of a conveyor, the PLC will ask the robots to execute their motion programs, which will bring a load from one conveyor to another.